Team Deck Gaming versus Evil Genius Sack. Grand Finals. I do think, however, this is the first time we see CDC play it in this tournament. Maybe they've played it like once or twice before, but not. At the, I don't recall seeing a single one at the main event, at least. Um, so definitely bringing something new to the table once again. And this time it's going to be Shiki's Lash Rack in the mid lane. So it is not a support Lash. I gotta say, this time around, I, I do feel like CDC have got a much more solid draft against what EG grabbed than in game one. Yeah, it, it really does look a lot better, but it, it's something outside of the box for C deck. It's, it's not this we group up as five kind of thing anymore. Uh, even though there is still a little bit of potential for that, we need to watch the presence of this 4 1 split, which comes with the, the effect of picking up a Broodmother. C deck will need to get this down pat. So XZ will be the Broodmother for this offlane. Looks like he's going to have himself a uh, most of EG moving up there later on because it will be Fierce Lane. Universe already blocked out the pull point with both Observer and Sentry for the Radiant side, while they actually put down a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know if we can actually class this as a, as a defensive ward, more of a just a, a rune ward watching the jungle movements of Evil Genius as Observer ward for C-Deck. And they will ensure they get top rune, so there will be no battle. Both teams are looking to op at opposite runes. Yeah, I think this is just going to be secured top lane and, and Shiki's going to get over top river. EG, both teams actually have really good level 1 fight, but they just decide to play it safe and just do a trade-off here. No, they're giving it to XZ. To the Broodmother. Here Are they switching this up? Okay, so we're running Whoa. off lane Quab, a mid lane Brood, and a safe lane Lesh. Okay, they're taking, they're not only surprising EG with the pick, they're also surprising them with the laning. This is definitely not what they were expecting. But there's already a sentry ward here for PPD, so Samal has to go up against the Brood Mother. And where are the counter sentries? There's one on the Brood. We have to watch this closely to see who's able to tango down the ward before it actually happens. Because Samal is going to keep high ground vision with this observer ward here, but he needs to have the true sight. PPD is just preparing. Well, he's just preparing his own farm right now. But Samal's getting a real rough time. Xe's getting up in his face and just chipping away at him. Yeah, he has a poor man's shield starter, so the exchange is going to favor him every single time they hit each other. He's going to start making his first spiraling here. But Ichi also switched up their lane. So it's a Queen of Pain versus a Clockwork. There's very little a Clockwork can do about this, uh, unless he can force the Queen of Pain to get caught out of position with no blink. But in trade-off, Ichi now run and the, I don't want to say an aggressive dual, dual lane, but there's still a lot of aggression that can come from it with both Fear and Aoi with this Jaro and Wyvern combining together for this offlane. They're not going to win this lane either if CDC play it right. This, this three on two favors them, not by just a little bit, but actually by a lot. They can just initiate with the Tusk with a follow-up stun from Lesh when Lesh is level two, and then the Soul Assumption. Jarocopter is not tanky in the start. He has seven armor right now, but he does not have much health. And just this extreme magic damage burst that this lane can provide. Fear will just... He's done. He's going away. Like, he doesn't want to play this lane. He's going to go top instead. This is also not a good matchup, though. He's a level 1 Gyro against a level 3 Queen of Pain. I, I don't think this could have gone any better for CDC in the first two minutes with the lanes they've got. Apart from the fact that Sumail is apparently destroying XC in mid, but we're used to seeing Sumail just doing extremely well in the first few minutes in the, in the mid-matchup. It's the Broodmother trying to find lances and just being incapable of doing so, but also Samel with a level 2 power shot, able to burn through a couple of spirelings. So the CS looks a little bit lopsided where it's 14-3 against 7-2, and that's because half of that is actually spirelings for Samel. So it's not as much money as you'd expect, but it's still keeping him in front of the Broodmother. Okay, so they have picked it three times at this event. They or two and one with it, DAC, or DAC, <laughs> DI, yeah, that's right. Living in the now, Sint. Yeah, let's, uh, let's focus on this event. And Did these guys actually even play at DAC? I can't remember if CDC were present in that tournament. I don't yes. so anyway. Gotta be careful, the cogs, he's actually locked in here. The shark blocked his path out, and Universe will be the first one going the way of C-Deck. There's... Okay, so here's the problem for EG. They cannot put a lane bottom. There's no one in their lineup who can face up against this tri lane. They but have absolutely no, no solution. There's no one who could move into the jungle. Like, you can't just have, like, someone like a Storm Spirit or a Dark Seer move into the jungle and take that farm instead. It's a very difficult situation for them. They'll, they'll have to find a solution for it. For now, they've just been jungling the CM of PPD. 
and they might be looking to maybe rotate on this mid lane, although as similar to the last game, Samael should have a pretty good idea that he is winning the lane right now. He's still being pressured while winning on farm, and Rewa is going to come in. Oh, now the snowball. This could be opening right now, especially with the shots. Locking some alien underneath the tower. Still a lot of damage being taken here by the Visage, and they're looking for a revenge pickoff. And with the shots, Wyvern will take it. It's going to be Owie. It's a lot of damage onto that Broodmother as well. He might consider dropping that sentry while yeah, he's getting he knows, rid of he knows there's the sentry now. He got hit by two tower shots under his web. Samael placed it just a moment ago as well, so... If he places that right now and eats the ops and the... Uh, well, oh, he only has one tango. <laughs> so he has to pick which one he eats and then he can just attack the other one. That would be... Give him a better grip on the mid lane. Now with Samael dead, XZ is level 5.5, same as Samael. So now this lane is pretty much dead even on gold. No ball off lane, he is in trouble. And this is, this, this is the rotation we're expecting from C deck during game at number one. And what we've seen from them this entire tournament. The lanes, yes, they've gone horribly wrong for EG, but C deck, their movement, they don't leave any lane unpressured. EG have to start getting somewhat active, or at least they need to get out their amazing counter ganks that they had in game number one. But it's way less predictable in this game how the movements are going to be because of the pressure CDC are putting on the lanes in general. Last game they didn't have the strongest laning phase, but this time around they're the ones kind of deciding the tempo of the game. This could be an interesting play for EG if they could manage to get the setup in the bottom lane. Shiki is pretty far up the lane. They can move in the clockwork with battery assault, and of course AUI can fly over here with the Arctic Burn. They're thinking about it, but they don't feel like they have enough information to really go for this kill right now. They don't, they don't know who else is behind it. They know they've at least blocked up the camp, but that doesn't mean anything. They're not seeing any other heroes. In fact, Tuskar is the man just sitting in the middle lane wondering what's going on. And if Universe aggressively moves down the lane, Shiki will just back up. He's got RK boots, he's quite happy just to bail out. And in fact, yeah, now he's going to realize this is not going to work. He throws out an Observer Ward, but this might have actually... It didn't get pinged out by C deck, but they have an Observer Ward of their own watching the movements of the Wyvern. Another reason why Shiki's being a little bit more on his toes. Shards of Snowball going on some Alby's well behind the tower. And Garden is throwing out the Sigil to ensure his safety as he retreats back from the Tier 1. Uh, if they don't, if they don't get him locked in with the shards, this this kill is just not happening. Unless they have a third hero in the gank, so it is going to fail. And EG are, are once again they're looking good in the mid lane as far as farm goes. But this time around, Fear is not having a free lane. He has been ganked. He is also tied on farm with the Lashrak. Whereas in the last game, I I feel like he was having a little bit of a no. He was he even having an early lead on CS. I think in the beginning, aggressive might have had the same, but. Uh, aggressive yeah, aggressive was ahead of him. He yeah. had a lot more denies as well. But Fear very quickly caught up. I don't think that's going to be the case in this game. I think Shiki is going to be able to stay toe to toe with him at the very least. Also, it Corlish Rack farms very quickly when he gets a couple items. Oh. How long has AUI been here? Uh, the last two to three minutes. And now PPD being slowed up. PPD turns for this one frost over. He can't do anything about it, EG. Uh, lose one, the rocket damage. Actually, quite heavy into the track. But meanwhile, you're snowballing out for Samel. He's wind running up. But now the call down from B with a rocket barrage. Flat cannon. They get the shackle on Garner. He can't ensure the last hit of damage. To try and bring down some out the extra support, the Sonic Wave comes in from Aggressive. Perfect time to move in, so it'll be a one-for-one -one trade off. I love the fact for EG that Fear is getting involved here and, and goes for the counter gank mid. They have to They have to kind of bait CDC into these positions where the cooldown can turn on them, and they get one kill here only, unfortunately, for them as was that what happened to the bottom? Okay. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. Apart so. from Samel's life, that's not as fine. Yeah, he's not looking too good right now, but CDC once again with a better trade and AUI wasted so much time in that bottom lane He was hanging around hoping for the gank and the moment they finally rotate over PPD He just gets killed nice shackle in the mid lane. They need more control of him They do have the sentry ward down so they're watching with the broodmother's going in a hot shot from universe Combining with the power shot from the wind ranger Before this was gonna happen. I was kind of like hey man broodmother great get great lane in the mid able to come back nicely Scouted out the stacks of the dire jungle, so wanted to move in and try and take these out to keep a net worth up high. But now with this kill, the Broodmother really decided to lose her grip on the mid lane. Maybe we also start looking at the uh, side lanes now. Rotations for C-Deck. Well, Queen of Pain of Aggressive is going to find AUI here. I don't think he can kill him because he doesn't have Sonic. And as a matter of fact, there could be a line for a Shackle here for some Mabel. Doesn't have the vision just then. 
have landed. Aggressive will just blink into the lane and, and farm up a bit. So dodging a bullet there. Okay, taking another one. <laughs> They're still gonna survive. Very difficult to escape the splinters. CDC have a smoke on guard. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Whenever they pick up smoke, so I think these, this is the team that holds onto their smokes for the shortest time. Like the mo it feels like they buy it and they go. They just have a plan, they, they want to keep the aggression up, get the ganks in. They now know Sumel is in the bottom lane, so they could have a really good opening here on Universe in mid. And if they do manage to catch him out, they should be able to claim the tower for Brood as well, which is a huge impact on the game. It's going to allow him oh, to... Oh, he's already here. They're the going to go on Universe, but the cooldown's going to come in. Universe with a rock of a rod to go stay alive here. Support was above, even hook-shotting himself back over to AUI to ensure everything is safe. And Ichi brought their entire team as well. As Here Didix again. saw this as they backed up, that Observe Ward in between the tower is seeing everything. Gyro is such an incredible counter yanker when you're in the right place at the right time. When you don't have to TP in and then drop your call down, which takes way too long, but you can just drop it from the fog. CDC, I think, making the right call there, just getting out instead of trying to dive for the kill and maybe losing two or even three heroes, so... Fear with another heads up play. But as a result, he's... Actually, he's still farming pretty well. I'm... He's... Being very, very effective in his movement. It's not like he's just hanging out in the mid lane, waiting there for two minutes for a gank to happen, similar to what the Wyvern did bot. He is just reading CBC very well. And now he's gonna have to read them extremely. Okay, he is very dead. There's, there's Rocket Barrage damage. He's still gonna live in one charges, but it's not gonna be enough. Immediate Caster's Curse. He's reading them very well, gets ganked. <laughs> <laughs> well, C-Deck also reading the game nicely. They understand fear and this Jarek but just how, much, how many issues they'll create for C-Deck. While this T1 tower, Samal's gonna try and keep it alive. You can only go for the denial, in fact, is able to claim it. And then power shuts down all the spiderlings too. So much extra money while on top lane, Visage caught out by Universe. And they're able to find that kill with the help of PPD. Universe not having even expended his hook shot to do this kill. And PPD's gonna find another one. Lashrax coming in, and his clockwork wanna try and help him out. The hook shot down into the cogs. Where's your battery? Your is there as well. They got extra health coming in from Samael. Just looking for the damage with the power shot. They want him dead, and they've got him dead. He was so close to landing a lightning storm on PPD, but he finds the fog just in the last second there on the Crystal Maiden. And Shiki, of course, missing the first stun. He did have a chance, but did get dodged by PPD in that situation. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the supports on both teams, because it's very important with these level 6s. It's actually aggressive. Yeah, he's going up to Aoi, but with that cold embrace, Aoi, yeah, he's not going to survive. The attack damage from the tower is not going to be enough either. The clockwork rocket was flying down from Universe. He might have been expecting his wife to survive a little bit longer. But yeah, uh, about the supports. Yeah, so... Both uh, the, the supports on, on both teams are actually finding decent levels. PPD is level 7 and a half in 11, which is very high for CM. Wyvern five and a half, Visage almost six, and Tusk five and a half. When C I think it favors CDC a bit more when their heroes get level six. The the Tusk and the Visage are extremely potent for ganks. It gives them a lot more information as well with the familiars together with broodlings. They can really start taking control of the map and look for the ganks. Similar to what uh, EG did in the last game with their Clockwork and Storm, they will be doing it by finding the information with just their summons and then oh. taking it from there is, oh, that was really close here. That was just an Universe. inch off, both in length and direction. And at the, at the same time for EG, the, the Winter's Curse from Wyvern. When you snowball in two heroes, the immediate counterplay from Wyvern can really destroy your combination. And they have, they have to give Wyvern level 6 now. It looks like they will as well. AUI will take two waves. Uh, Samael, locked to the trees, trying to cut through it with a power shot. But Carter, we're going to body block him up right now. That Sigil's making life difficult, not to mention the rest of CD coming in with the stuns. They'll find themselves the pick. At the same time, EG, they're searching for this Broodmother. They're spiraling. They're chasing down TPD. The Battery Assault from Universe trying to keep him back. And now she called and breaks into the splinter. That's a really good farm for Aoi. And the Ice Shard's positioning for that gank on Samael was just absolutely oh, oh, if you're almost getting the... The, the homing missile, I, actually... Level 1. Okay, yeah, that's not enough damage. And it also probably won't get back past the towers. But what was like The Ice Shards that Tusk got off down here, this is like the Cliff of Doom for EG. <laughs> that one right there. That's where they lost their Game 1 to CDC as well, against Tusk. He cut them off with Ice Shards and split, split the fight in two. And they actually got a really good fight that looked like uh, EG could have gained even more momentum. It was the first of many fights that CDC managed to grab in that game. And Ice Shards are so good on choke spots like that. You really just 
they, they lock you down for so long. It's like Fissure, but in a way more controllable as far as angle goes. They see him. They see the brood mother passing directly away, and the spinelings turn on their mother as the clockwork jumps in. But there's so many spiders in, and the battery is also doing the work up against the brood mother. The hunger is just insatiable from XZ. Universe being cold and braced up. Brood mother still running away, but they've lost the vision now. And in comes Shiki with the lightning bouncing around. Universe as well as AUI, but with a shackle, the truck is controlled. There's nowhere near enough damage to find any kind of revert for revenge kill on EG. A sphere with a sonic wave, a little bit of trouble. The familiar stuns as well as the spawns. They find the kill, but PPD letting it go right now until the snowball comes in from C Deck. They need more. Universe is on the run. The cogs gonna push back the rest of C Deck, buying space for surveil until aggressive comes in with a scream. The familiars will do. We'll find a pickup on Universe. A three for one trade off. And it looked like Shiki was getting over aggressive there. Great shackle from Samail, but the backup from CDC, once again, they're so quick at gathering up. It's something the, the panel has talked about a lot as far as their playstyle goes. This is probably the fastest team at rotating and at backing each other up. And in this case, you can't really say they outnumbered EG, but the key point about this fight is that the call-down missed. It's been the winning point in every single skirmish EG has had. This time around, Fear doesn't land it. And with that on cooldown, they're able to chase them down with the Grave Chill, as well as the spiders in the web. Let's start to talk about, like, our late game. How does C-Deck end this game against Evil Geniuses? You're running a Brood, you're running a Lesh. So, how do you actually take out EG and still ensure you can take the ranks without losing your entire team? Is this when you look towards Broodmother with Necro units? Because you went for a Vlance to start with. What's what's the build? You could look to split push. You could also just look to control the map. Like, the, the ultimate goal on there. Down. Call down. Yeah, PPD got the vision with the Sentry Ward, but now Broodmother just runs away from Fear. He even triggered drum charges for this, but couldn't find it. I think CDC, the, the main point they, or the main thing they need to accomplish is to get more towers right now. Uh, looking at the base push is of course something they're going to have to do eventually. But if they manage to get far enough ahead on towers and have Brute just control the entire jungle, they could be really flexible in what items they need to buy. Universe, nice hook shot down. He's going to trigger off the dust. They see the Brute Mother perfectly. And PPD, there we go again. All over the Brute Mother and he will go down this time. And that's real Crystal Maidens do. You wait the full 10 seconds. He's like, I keep getting money in on my bank account because he runs Broodlings into me. Okay, I, I mean, that's cool. just give me a little bit of more gold. As a rich CM, then. I think the Broodmother was like, okay, why is he still channeling his ultimate? He's got to stop now. Okay, he's got to stop now. <laughs> Shackle bottom lane. Samal catching out Garda. Our AUI is here as well. Going to curse him up. And that means Tuska can go nowhere. Aggressive try to come in, but he doesn't really have mana ready to fight. Tearing down some mail. The lightning will start it off, and that's where he can do a little bit more work. It's coming in from the Shrek, looking for any kind of block. In fact, some mail turns onto the shackle. You'll have the splinter coming in from AUI. Making a little bit more nerve wracking if Lashrak is going to force the issue. But without the sonic wave from the Queen of Pain, there wasn't enough damage to counter the gank from EG. They've got a couple of good kills in the last few minutes, EG. And this has to happen for them, because else the map is going to fall apart. If they can keep on finding the picks, it disallows CDC from grouping up as four and having Brood split pushing, or even as, it, as they have done so far. They are really fighting with their Brood. It's often the Brood initiating the ganks with the Spiderlings, forcing out Cold Embrace, uh, getting into a position where she can attack with Insatiable Hunger, and then, of course, there's been a couple of counterplays from EG, but overall, XZ has actually had really good success in this game with an alternative playstyle for this Brood that we see very rarely these days. Instead, that's where we were looking for at the, at the very, very start of the drops. Like this, this four and one, which is just so uncharacteristic of C deck. Now a whole bunch of spiders actually chasing in the universe. They don't actually find him until the creep wave connects. But you, you're right. It's this, it's this different style of brood, almost going back to. I, I don't want to. I'm going to quote it anyway. The uh, the zero four four built. When you get the when you get the insatiable bite up. And then you just start fighting. You just try and find kills and run yourself in. In this case, it's a lot more of a balanced kind of build where he's controlling so many different areas of the jungle, making it e hard for EG to stack and just flash farm. Everything's being watched. I'm also liking how EG's getting a little bit more inventive with their sentry force, putting them deeper inside the tree line. A lot more difficult to counter ward for C deck, even if they do have sentries down. And it just goes to show how much the brood is doing. They're. They're really worried about the amount of control CDC are getting on the map, and yes, they're gathered up top, and they're not getting killed right now, and they're putting down these sentries, but 
At the same time, Aggressive is just split pushing the bottom lane, finding his Orchid, and this bottom tier 1 tower is probably not long for life. I don't think EG will be in a position to hold this. So the Brood, even though she is unsuccessful in finding the towers herself, space created. EG's already prepared to try and force in the top lane, so it's going to be the tier 1 tower there. Well, she's got a little bit of damage. The Strike's already going to defend the mid lane, which is where another place where EG could decide to push. And see that the choice is there. Do you want to try and fight? You're going to shot up to start with. He will dodge it. The catapult is still alive, so there's still some decent damage coming into this tower. But at the same time, a gank is also being prepared on bottom lane. That one's looking for aggressive. He'll be successful with the TP out, however. Oh, he cancelled it. Wait, he did? Wait, if they see him, the Rocket Flare, they're going to see him. The Blink Down Universe off oh, he target. He almost ran into it. I wonder why Aggressive cancelled. So I think what they wanted to happen there is Aggressive had to wait for the Courier to deliver his Orchid and then he wanted to TP and actually fight for the top tier 1 but they had already used the Glyph. Fear put a really good call down down just zoning CDC out and uh, securing the tower and when Aggressive saw that he was porting on the tier 2 and he couldn't reach he just chose the greedy option which was to not port in because well we're not catching them anyway I'll stay bottom and then EG go for the gank. If that hookshot lands I think he's toast so very important for Aggressive to not get caught out. Would have been really important for EG to take it as well, because CDX about to fight even more. Uh, Q has finished a full mech in under 20 minutes over on this Versage. So Evil Geniuses have to be prepared for CDX to group up and try and force the issue against EG. No need to wait. CDX will be looking for these early fights. This seems to be Q's build on Visage. He did this in game one against EG as well of the winner's bracket when they picked Visage. Uh, most Visage players these days just go brown boots into uh, the solo crest and maybe an, an axe somewhere down the road. Uh, but in CDC's drafts, they don't really have any other mech carrier, and he he makes very good use of it. Of course, Visage is an innately very tanky hero once you get points up in Gravekeeper's Cloak, so you're very likely to be able to get the mech off. Samael, so gotta get himself away from this. He just broke the five man smoke that was there from C deck. Observe all is watching Universe pretty closely, but as PPD is the man who's in trouble until Universe hook shots himself in, going up the guard of a PPD, already down for the count, dying to the track while Universe, the shards will block him in, the snowball art from Familiars are coming in, they do have their stuns available, might need a little bit more damage as now, there's Samael, can't get the shackle, he was just went for the ulti over on the Tusker, because now EG's trying to back out this one, Samael, as well as AUI, the only one's alive, and now he's gonna get all good, stopped up, that's a very, very dead Samael, but the he actually holds Queen of Pain back with a blink hit. Only stall up. Not control completely. And EG losing four heroes very, very quickly for the price of a Tuscar. Not to mention, now Broodmother with a tier one tower down on top lane. There's a lot more map control coming the way of C deck. It's very difficult for EG to take fights when they get assaulted on two or three fronts at the same time. We had like two split fights going on. There was the Brood and the Queen of Pain going for the Gyro first. And at the same time, they get an initiation at the bottom side with the Tusk here. And EG's lineup is just, it's built to take these really strong 5 on fights, uh, 5 on 5 fights, but these 2 on 3s or 3 on 2s or whatever right now, 3 on come out. Universe, oh, shot, he misses oh. it. He'll still get in range of the battery assault, turning on the blade bell as well. But Shrek does not want to try and fight this one, but he has no choice. Denial with the Bloodstone. Versage was still able to get that last hit in the tier 2 tower underneath the noses of EG. It's going to be as bad for this is a big cooldown forced by, by EG. This is a three minute cooldown on level one on the familiars for the Visage. And perhaps EG can do something with this, but they lost so much. They lost multiple heroes, they lost a tier two mid, they lost a third of their top tier two. And they have so many problems to solve first. I'm sure they would love to go for these aggressive plays, but they feel like they constantly have somewhere they need to take care of. They have to defend the top lane. Now again, Lushrek is pushing out mid. It's very hard to gather up, get a smoke, and get into the enemy jungle and be aggressive when you constantly just have to struggle to control just your own side of the map. Even half of your own side of the map. Maybe it's that time then where EG should just look to just find their timing for farm. I know they're really going to be taking out this Ancient stack. There's like a quad stack of Ancients there. That EG, oh, the Familiars, they're scouting out the fact, like, they're looking over towards the stack right now. So we'll see the quad stack, and we'll see if you're farming it up. But EG, they prepare the bait by putting Aoi as well, Somalian. Actually, no, that is uh, not the real attract. All the... Okay, yeah, this is this is not going right for EG. They're losing a 2-2. Two -two. Yep. Man, this is so much time being wasted by one illusion and a couple of familiars, while then C-Deck 
they know they can just force an issue. You're gonna desolate a brood mother. Still gonna fly out, but if they get the roast, this is a pretty good trade for EG actually, considering this this tier two, there was no way they were gonna hold it. They're gonna get the ancients afterwards, perhaps. See, they don't see it though. They are not expecting this play to come out, and it's gonna be successful. If I could wait for EG to come out and try and wrap around into the dire jungle. Now the ping comes in from Vitalskar, but EG have already gotten away with murder on Roshan. That's a very confident play as well. If EG get caught there while they're rushing, they, the game's almost over. Like, they were already pretty far behind on Golden Experience in this game. So going for a desperation play like that is definitely the right call in the situation here from PPD. Getting the Ancients too is going to bring fear. It's actually going to get him his BKB. It's pretty much just enough. If he can get all three, it will be, yeah. So... Here we go. See, they don't contest Roshan. They do scout out the ancient stack, but are incapable of stopping it or unwilling to stop it. And then you can have Samel finding more and more money over on this Wind Ranger. So she's able to combine up something else with the Aghanim set for some level of damage dealing item. Even AUI was able to fall up a full Glimmer Cape on this Winter Wyvern. So there's more and more ways appearing for EG where they can find C-Deck if C-Deck try and force the issue. And maybe that's another reason why they're not until they're in a nice comfortable zone. That's I think the T1 tower. PBD taking a very long time to TP out. He is going to join it as well, but yep, all of C-Deck. They head down bottom, including the Broodmother. Another one of those classic CDC rotations where they just go immediately all heroes to one place. EG read it this time around, they don't get caught. Question is if they can hold their tier 2. They do have the Aegis, of course, on some male, who will most likely be acting as an aggressive kind of bait here, as I, I think EG want to try and fight this. But they do have call down on cooldown for another 10, as Fear used it as a defensive measure, and actually they will be too late. It has gone no glyph. They also haven't got a smoke, I think, so no real... I'm not feeling confident initiating into that. And, and rightly so. Right, there's two Observer Wars that's watching their movement around. So Cedek knew exactly what they could get away with there, and EG had no way to just slip under the radar. As we now get a Blink Dagger is the next item up for Samel. I was wondering if he's actually going to go for damage. It all just turned into, you know what, we need Samel for initiation. Even though the clockwork is fantastic, getting that double Shackle Shot is just so critical for EG during fights. This build is, in my opinion, the best in most cases if you're playing a core Wind Ranger mid. It's just, it allows you to find solo pickoffs. It allows you to engage and disengage. You can go in with the blink where in the in a lot of situations you would maybe have to wind run to catch up first for the shackle and then what's your defensive, what's your what's your getaway item? You don't really have anything. So uh, this catches enemies by surprise, it gives you single pickoff potential, it lands allows you to land these two man shackles and all in all just makes you way, way more powerful for the price of twenty two fifty. But now He's, he's powerful, but nowhere to really use it. As C-Deck, they're backing out. So it's uh, it's Lashrak farming up on top. Trying to wait another 13 seconds so that Bloodstone comes back up. Cool down, and there's your blink to shackle. Lashrak, well, no denial for you. Brought down with a double damage Wind Ranger. And she actually used both the Wind Run and the blink. She was really far away, but saw the opening. Now they, they could push for a tier off. two tower. Like, you still got the double damage rate, and in fact, yep, there goes your wind run. They try and burn through the tower while on bottom lane. You've got the push coming in, and in fact, the hook shot down from Universe, catching an XD, reveals him off with the dust. AUI still has the curse, so Broodmother's not going to go anywhere, and with a call down as well, EG will find the kill. Meanwhile, on top, Samel, all cut up and in real trouble, but the Aegis the all of PPD waiting in the wings, but what really can he do? Apart from watch him die, is there a blink at wait? And yes! Samel gets away, aggressive, shackled up, he's going for more PPD. He can't let, actually lend any more help. Samel will die, the blink forward, PPD will be able to escape. An almost a miraculous escape from the Wind Ranger. Nice attempt there from Samel, but ultimately again... In a way, it, it, this was another fight where CDC are determining the tempo of the game, right? The, EG go for an aggressive play, they find the pick off on Lesh with the Wind Ranger, they start being aggressive. The moment there's any sort of rotation needed to deal with the Brute Bottom, CDC immediately gather top with the remaining four heroes, and they just run down whatever EG didn't TP away from up there. So EG are kind of forced into a position where they either have to full back with all their heroes there, or they have to go for a trade. And I don't think that trade really favored them. They lost Aegis and a hero only to kill the Brute.
Well, they did, but at the same time, like, they, they need something, because every time they don't do it, C-Deck holds an advantage. They're coming down now, a smoke movement with a hook shot. They catch out the Broodmother once again. Again, that Blade Mail as well, not helping out the Broodmother. More TP supports coming in from C-Deck, and the cooldown already used from Fear. The Familiars flying right over the top, not getting the stuns. But aggressive, a blink in two seconds. He'll be chasing up after Universe. Cogs might better keep them out for now. In fact, both familiars don't stun anything. And AUI, where's the shackle? BKB from aggressive. He'll dodge it, and Universe dying so quickly with the power shot. But fear on the front lines of the Rocket Mirage with the help from Samal. They find the kill. The gem's also over on the deck, and they'll try and hold him here. Aggressive, Frostbit and PPD. We're going in right now. The freezing field drops, but he will be stunned up and controlled. But Shiki, no, he'll have to deny himself. They're not having a great fight here. See the EG again, the upper hand. They're chasing up after Garda. He'll drop as well. Queen of Pain able to escape, running away with that gem of truth side of C deck. So and it's a 4 1 trade off. This is what EG are able to accomplish with their BKB on Gyro with the 10 second charge and the fact that they finally got a fight that was on one front. They got the opener on the Brood. No immediate counterplay from CDC makes the fight 5 on 4. And when they try to go in for a counterplay, it's Sumail. Oh, nice tonight here by Q. It's Sumail they have to try to catch because he is outputting so much damage, but Fear takes all the attention in the fight with all the damage he is outputting. And of course, PPD there with a very good freezing field as well. And the Winner's Curse. They got everything off the way they wanted there, EG. Honestly, for EG, it's probably the dream scenario. The universe finds a kill in the Brood, and then that CDC dropped everything on him, because he already used his Hookshot and his Blade Mill. After that, he's not that valuable of a kill compared to a hero like the Gyrocopter or the Windrage. The Windrage is going to become more valuable shortly. We're looking at a Desolator build coming in from Sumail. So he's walking around with a Deso recipe. Didn't actually buy the Mithril Hammer. So probably one of those buys where he's not 100% certain that he will, he'll be able to survive the fight. And this is going to help him greatly going up against that Broodmother, who's already walking around with 22 armor. And they're establishing control again inside the Dire Jungle. PPD is trying to farm just on the edge of town. I'm surprised with, uh, with how CDC are playing this game that the Brood is not going for a BKB. I think it would actually be a really good item this game. Pretty much ignore most of the clockwork. You can ignore the Crystal Maiden. Lots of Gyro's damage is still magical. So the only he hero who's really a threat is the Wind Ranger and her physical damage, but you could probably just disengage and find a different initiation angle or a different target. That's disengaged now. Like they're, they're trying to force out the top lane. In fact, EG, oh, they don't have any vision behind the tower, so they're not as certain about it. But the double damage are in the hands of Wind Ranger. They could at least force the fortification out from C deck. And that will allow her to slip into the, into the mid lane at one point and take out that tier 1 2. So Mal's gonna run. He's gonna be fine. He has a good uh, defensive ward down around the river area. CDC once again find nothing. They group up for it. But they do have decent lane positions. The bottom lane, C e EG didn't manage to push as much as they would have liked, I think. Uh, AY did whatever he could there with the cold embrace, but obviously couldn't get in too close with the risk of getting caught out. There's a lot of spiders that are being cleaned up here. So much money for EG. And oh, this is the objective. This they is are, where the fight's going to be. They're going to be really happy with the spawn timing of this. It's 10 seconds away from spawn, so it's a quick Roshan. And the reason why it's even better is Samal still is holding on to this double damage rune. So he's got this during the next fight. In fact, EG, they're moving forward at the moment. The Hawk shot in from Universe. He's caught two inside the Cogs and falls out himself back out again. The Shanzo is a real long in position. Universe, he just gets exploded. But at the same time, Samael trying to bring down Garda. There's a little bit of help. PPD, the Freezy feels not doing enough work. In fact, he's dying to Familiars. And he will, in fact, go down. They're going in deeper, but Samael locked in and control EG. They're going to lose four. Fear trying to change it around as much as he can. But now they're going to lose five. Control of this game. It was starting to swing away from them. It was a 5k advantage in net worth going the way of C deck. But look at the curve when we go to the experience. It kicks straight back up again for, for C deck. EG, they are in real trouble now. Samael just doesn't have enough damage just yet. It's 33 minutes in. He's not having his best game on that Wind Ranger compared to what we saw earlier on in the tournament. If he would have had the Deso, this fight would have been completely different. But 
They don't kill fast enough with the focus fire. I think they also layer their abilities a little bit too much. There was a little bit of stun layering there. The shackle shot was not expired when the Winter's Curse from AUI came in. And it also looked like they weren't focusing on the same target entirely. So they spread it like they did a lot of damage to two targets instead of killing one off. And then the snowball from Garter saves the Lishrak after his self fuels. And they just get to dodge the freezing field and find all the kills at the end. Beautiful play from Cedek, not losing a single player there. That it looked like it was going to be a great fight for EG, but they just lacked that little bit extra that could have turned it their way. You're right. It also comes down to a huge snowball coming in from Garda. He was able to protect two of the Cedek players throughout the fight. So the layering from Cedek was perfect. But for now, Cedek back to that farming kind of game, unless they can find an opening. The Observer was watching all of EG moving into their own jungle. Next wave of items is starting to arrive, so a full BKB Lashrak is now up and running. You've still got that Blink Dagger over on the Tusker. And we've got two Plate Mails, one for the Corp and one for the Broodmother. So we're looking at both Shivas and Assault Curas being built up here for C-Deck. And in fact, the Assault Curas is already done. And that's over on Aggressive. He is 709. Super farmed this game, 235 CS. He's third highest. <laughs> CDC have got full map control now. That one fight just gave them the entire map on a platter, and they even have a gem, so the final parts of EG's defensive lines outside of their base is now gone. And with Shiki with this BKB and the Aegis, the next fight EG take, they, they don't kill Shiki during BKB with anything else than a Focus Fire Wind Ranger. But her Deso is still not ready, so I'm not even sure that's gonna cut it. And then they still have the problem of dealing with the second life. This next fight CDC are going into with a very, very high odds of winning unless EG get a miracle combo off. And they even have to babysit Smail as he tries to complete up this Desolator. Win range not the healthiest of heroes as far as life goes. And now it's even harder for him. It's just... It's, it's a good idea. You have, you have to venture so deep in, into the Radiant Jungle for this farm. Fear just upped his damage quite a bit with this uh, butterfly and of course his defense as well 35 percent evasion there's no mkp on the radiant it's a really good item against visage um the brood mother will also lose quite a bit of damage but judging from how the fights have gone so far cdc haven't really targeted spear super early in the fight i think he died last in that last fight they just went for the easy targets first and then they took out some l and then on to fear in the end if they can tank the gyro's damage with this Kiras giving them all 5 armor, with the Brute giving them all 5 armor with Vlads, they have 10 AoE armor. The left looks pretty fragile in isolation right now, but he technically has 18 armor during teamfights. EG. They don't have enough oomph right now, they have to just wait. Try to wait out the Aegis, get the Deso and some mail, and then go for the fight of their lives to come back into this game. And CDC can just keep map control. They're doing the right thing, they're farming the enemy jungle, uh, they're pushing out both top and mid lane. EG are taking the only lane that's kind of safe for them here in the bottom. And, and they're not even showing a carry down here. It's PPD who's split pushing. They might be concerned with losing a, a more key hero at this point. Well, right now, Snake's so looking for that key hero. They've smoked up with four players as well as a couple of familiars. Shiki is the only one showing himself in the mid lane. In fact, yes, they are going to wrap around the bottom. As you said, it's, it's AUI and PPD. It's the two supports who are down here. So Mel's just trying to farm the jungle. He's 50 gold away from having that Desolator. And right now, he's going to walk almost into EG. The blink into the tree line, and as well as TP out. So Mel, he does it in time. And AUI looks like he'll also be successful. So an unsuccessful smoke gank from C-Deck. And a lot of time wasted for them. And they lose the tower. They will deny it, though. So not the biggest loss, but... EG doing a good job reading map movements with uh, zero vision. If you look at the entire vision, they see absolutely nothing right now. And on the quite the contrary, CDEC, they have four Observer Wards out. When these, when these familiars are done... Well, then again, Hookshot, Universe, he's found the broom on the BKB to be done. Universe just four stars himself away, it's Shiki. He's moved up even further, looking for Samal. Samal did get perfectly stunned and brought down by the pass number. Fear with the call down, he might have enough damage. No, he does not. EG lose three. This is spiraling completely out of control. For Evil Geniuses and perfectly in the position for C-Deck. AUI locked on the other side of the trees. He's dead in the world. The only one left up is Universe. But this is the time when CDEC can just push and try and take a Rax. Shiki already TP'd himself up to the top lane. They're looking for more than just one. 
I think Universe in that situation didn't realize XC picked up the BKB. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's the right choice to go for and did it after the plate mail. The moment that BKB was popped, the EG were in a lot of trouble. They didn't have the counterplay to the Brood. They just put the Clockwork into a horrible position. And it looks very likely right now that the series will be tied up. Jump in by aggressive at the same time. They're going to snowball after AUI. He's down for the count. Universe having this one-on-one -on -one battle with a Broodmother. A battle which he will lose a four stars away. He had to bail out of this one. Live to fight another day. He has already expended his call down to try and stop this push on the top lane. But he'll have to come in with Flat Cannon as well, PPD. That Greaves already been triggered by Z-Deck. They're happy to find this in the universe so low when he jumps in the blade mount, not protecting him almost a 50 life, but Samael's the main man who's in trouble. They've lost everything. EG, good game. We will have a guaranteed fourth game as C-Deck level the series 1-1. That bridge by the last pick really